So I just uh, wrote a, a piece of writing and I, I posted it on one of my Facebook pages and I thought I thought I'd make a video about it because um, it's it's a it's an interesting topic, um, dark to say the least. And I, I I came up with the idea to to make a piece of content about it while on my walk today. Something I I think about pretty regularly, not in regards to this person in particular, but outliers in general. Um, I, I have a, a a real big interest in personality, and um, I, I love analyzing you know using the big five personality model and the other day i was thinking about adolf hitler and you know where he would rank using the big if we use the big five personality model now there's no there's no denying the fact that hitler was uh, a very traumatized and disturbed individual and you know, it's it's supposedly he he suffered a lot of trauma during his childhood, a lot of abuse and neglect. I I read that he had an Oedipus. He he had a Oedipus complex, which is when you have a hatred towards your father and a and a love or an attraction towards your mother. And I also read that he he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. So you know, th there are all these reports and all these uh, allegations and and whatnot about his personality and i just thought i'd break down the big five for you and uh give estimates educated estimates on what i think where he's where he stands someone like hitler it's it's difficult with someone like him because he's such an outlier and you know whatever whatever i suggest it's it's not going to be accurate but this is just my estimates anyway firstly i'd say He's really, really high in, in intelligence um, to, to be able to achieve what he did. And of course, this is um, he didn't achieve anything positive on that note. However, to be able to do what he did to, to influence and persuade people to the point that he did, you, you need to have some sort of superior intelligence to be able to do that. And it's a shame that such a, a bright mind... And a tragedy that such a bright mind would, you know, wreak the havoc that he, and the destruction that he wreaked on, on our society. Now, let's break down the big five. These are my estimates. So, we have openness to experience. And openness to experience is uh, associated with traits like um, sensitivity to aesthetics, open-mindedness, uh, creativity, um, diversity, now, I would put Hitler, within this domain, I'd put Hitler as extremely low. Extremely low in openness. Just because of his narrow views. He, he had such narrow views. And someone who's high in openness is extremely open to diversity, to, to for fairness and for equality. And this is exactly the... Op Hitler was ex stood for the exact opposite of that. It's found that... People who rank high, who score high in uh, openness to experience tend to be more liberal, so probably more left-leaning, and Hitler's ideology suggests that he was a radical, extreme, right-wing, conservative, so, you know, f for that reason, I'd, I'd, and for the reason that he had such narrow views, I'd put him as extremely low in, in openness to experience. In terms of... Um, Correlational relationships between personality traits and intelligence. Openness to experience has the strongest correlational relationship to intelligence. And this, uh, this, this wouldn't make sense seeing as though I, um, I have suggested that Hitler probably was really, really high in intelligence but low in openness to experience. But just the fact that he was... Um, he was so right wing in in his in his ideologies, and he was so narrow in his views. Just to me, says that he was probably extremely low in that domain of personality. The second domain is uh, conscientiousness, which is associated with dutifulness, uh, work ethic, discipline, orderliness. And I would put Hitler as uh, extremely high in conscientiousness, off the charts conscientiousness. The, the efficiency to which he was able to assemble 
his his military and um, the efficiency of the military in and of itself was was so unbelievable at the time. You, it it was it caught so many so much of the opposition off guard and his his military the way he assembled it was uh it was it was renowned at the time for its efficiency and its and its effectiveness whether or not it was that was for better or worse obviously that was for worse but it was known at the time that, that this military was just so highly efficient and and it just caught everyone off guard like people do People didn't know what to do. Other other nations and their militaries just didn't know what to, they didn't know how to handle this level of efficiency. So, you know, we we can suggest that that uh, he was he was high in conscientiousness in that way to to be able to achieve you know something like that. And then orderliness, which is a sub sub trait of conscientiousness, we can say that there's been a correlation between this subdomain of orderliness and uh, sensitivity to disgust. And, um, it's, you know, when you, when, you, when you hear about how Hitler viewed um, the, the Jewish people, it was almost as if he saw them as a, as a bad bacteria, as an infection on, on German society. And, and it was almost as if they were infesting the 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 pure blood of germany and he mentioned many times that he was his mission was to to achieve an ethnic cleanse and it, it's clear that he was his disgust was was you know so intense that he he viewed his mission as as cleaning this this bad bacteria and and, and uh so that's why i, su I suggest you know He's probably high, really high in conscientiousness. The next domain is extroversion. Um, no doubt he was gregarious and um, really outgoing and people-centric in the sense that he was able to influence people and um, he, he, had a, he had an uncanny ability to do so. Obviously for the worst in, in his case, but there's no denying that he was... Um, he was extremely charismatic and and charming for the people at the time. All right, let's go down to the next domain, which is agreeableness. Um, so I would I would score him really really low in agreeableness. Agreeableness is usually associated with traits such as compassion, politeness, altruism, and it's clear that he was the exact opposite. And the fact that he the way he rose to power. He was in such opposition of, you know, the, the, the state of Germany at the time. And he was highly disagreeable, you know, towards, in his views, towards the, that state of Germany at the time. And, and you know, to, to rise to power like that and to, to take such a, you know, to, to rise to the top of the dominance hierarchy like that, take some sort of disagreeableness like you know to a lesser extent we can look at a lawyer someone who's a lawyer is uh you know a lot of lawyers rank low in 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 agreeableness and in their case it, it, it's a it's going towards something productive something good um so ranking low in agreeableness isn't necessarily a, a, a bad trait um but to the extent that Hitler was uh, disagreeable, was obviously destructive. The last domain is neuroticism. And again, he would be off the charts in neuroticism. Neuroticism is usually associated with emotional instability, volatility, withdrawal, depression, fear. And, you know, given that he was supposedly diagnosed with schizophrenia and he, he it was reported that he regularly used methamphetamine. So you can only imagine, you know, Imagine using methamphetamine and exasperating those those um, schizophrenic or psychotic symptoms that are already there. And given the trauma that he went through as a kid, and you know he was he was obviously a me very mentally ill individual. And um, you know I can only imagine during those during that time that he was in power, and you know if you could imagine 
when Nazi Germany were on their downfall, you know, that, that bitterness and that resentment and that depression and that paranoia, it would have just been off the charts. And, you know, given his high levels of volatility, which is a sub trait of uh, the domain of neuroticism, you know, being highly volatile and being on methamphetamine even, you know, he probably would have gone from zero to a hundred just like that. Um, so if you, he, he would have been a really miserable person to be around and probably really intimidating at that. Um, imagine someone just exploding from going from zero to a hundred, especially if he was under the influence of methamphetamine and, you know, he's, uh, he's schizophrenic and, um, you know, he's, he's bitter and resentful and depressed and paranoid and he would have just been scary to be around like really you wouldn't want to piss him off he's he's in control he's got this power behind him and um and he's just out to to wreak absolute havoc to the worst possible way that you could imagine and yeah he he just he it, it, he would have been a really miserable person behind closed doors he would have been a miserable person he probably he probably, I, th I heard that he he suffered from an inferiority complex, and you know this is this makes sense given the abuse that he suffered in childhood, and um and along with all these other mental illnesses that he had, who knows what he had, but yeah, he would have been a really miserable person to be around, um, and he would have been suffering so much on the inside. In interestingly, that you know if you look at some of these, some of these events that have occurred in recent times, you know, with, with um, serial killers or, or mass shooters and stuff like that, these people are obviously really, really disturbed. But it's, it's hard to imagine someone who's so disturbed that they're willing to be so destructive, not only to themselves, but to, to people around them, to innocent people around them. It's almost as if they want to, they want to watch, they want to watch themselves burn, but they don't, that it's not only wanting to watch themselves burn, they want to take people down with them, um, which makes it, you know, even more, it, it's, it's really disturbing to, to think about, you know, you know, as opposed to, as opposed to someone who's depressed and, and suicidal, say, their, their objective is to self-destruct. But then you have this, you know, this uh, this next level of self destruction, but bringing everyone down with you, watching the world burn. It's, it's um, it's it's another level of of deranged, disturbed, kind of mental illness and and um, in an individual. So, yeah, these are my breakdowns. These are obviously um, estimates. They're educated estimates. I've I've done a bit of um. A bit of work on personality myself, uh, not only my university studies, but um, outside of that, Jordan Peterson does a really, really good um, course on personality where he breaks down each individual trait. And I, I've done multiple uh, personality tests on myself, so it's it's a it's a topic that I'm really, really interested in. And and thinking about you know personality and and uh, you know, in relation to these outliers like um, like Adolf Hitler is, is really something that really interests me. So these are just educated guesses. Um, if you're interested, uh, drop your your points of view in the comments section. Um, and yeah, I'd like to know. I'd like to know what you think.